So stage two is getting the Series A investment. So now we've got five million dollars. So you know, from a small Cape Town team, we, we basically had to. There's a lot of stuff that to be rebuilt. So we built as a small team. Was, you know, I think that we're going to take the next step. So we, we basically realized we needed to have um, resources in San Francisco, which we basically settled down in, where I live right now, and. Um, we both have, we have 30 people there right now, but we built that team up to about 15 or so. Uh, we're using this $5 million and we had 12 years. So we have to come here about 27 people with, with $5 million and we started really building out one portion of our business, uh, in the platform side of our business in a big way and getting it out there. Um, we had approved user adoption, so we started acquiring customers and getting customers into our platform, PR, marketing, whatever it is, whatever it took. We had to um, get market traction, it's sort of the same thing. So showing the market, demonstrating the, the traffic we, we, we can generate and, and, and prove that we can monetize this product. So, you know, is this something people will pay for? Will they pay for the domains? Is this an assumption? Can we, you know, will people pay for domains at 20 bucks a month here? And is that, is that just a false assumption or not? And then build a media profile, which we've done pretty well. Um, so Series B, you know, our Series B investment is basically to guess profitability. And um, so we've got the $20 million, because now we've proven this model, we've put the traffic levels up, we've shown that people love the product, great reviews, uh, it's one of the leading products in the market, you know, outplace, Microsoft Office Live, for example. Uh, you know, so we, we've got a point now where it's, it's, it's being seen as a, a or the market leader, in my opinion. Um, our targeted user base for the end of this round of funding is 20 million users, for reasons I mentioned earlier. So our strategy is actually to use analytics. So you know, often it's like a thumbs up. You go, ah, you know, people would love this button right here, and we don't do that. We actually go and we, you know, we, we want to we're trying to do split testing, uh, data driven decisions. On the show, which is a big uh, enterprise uh, web analytics tool to give us many insights as to what people are doing on site, what people are doing um, with our tool, what buttons they're clicking, what order they're going through, and just optimizing processes. So using a a, a real data-driven model, and none of this you know, touchy feely, looky feely stuff. I don't like that. Okay. Um, having viral growth as, as a strategy is important. Actually, taking it off is more. It's, it's easier said than done. It's very. It's easier to say we want to grow virally, but what does that mean? How does it happen? Um, increase our revenue per user. So now we sell you a domain name. Let's sell you for removal. Let's sell you a template. Let's sell you this. You know, share of on a customer basis. Focus on ease of use and um, yeah, you know. Acquiring customers at the point where they're, it's a subset of gross profit. So if we acquire a customer and they spend twenty dollars a year with us in margin, we should be paying, let's say, ten for that customer, not twenty-five or not thirty. And and gain that balance is, is a key part of what online marketing is about. So the secrets to securing investment. Um, I think you know, with any business you need a good team of people. You need a good plan. You, know, you need to articulate what you're doing. I don't read 10 page business plans, I don't think any investors do. Um, you know, the Patriot Act just signing those up to 400 page documents, you know, no one read. It's a good example. People don't read long plans. Um, so have short plans and have, have it succinct so you can explain to people in a few minutes <coughs> or a few minutes. Um, building a good network, you know, a good pitch, a good demo, persistence. I mean, I, at times I was like, this is not going to work, I'm going to give up. And uh, be persistent because, you know, Better to actually just be persistent and do everything you can, and then it doesn't work, you know, you can give it your best shot. But you know, giving up before you've actually given your best shot is, is, is actually more helpful than anything. Um, have passion for your idea and make it what you want to do. You know, in life, you can do something that makes you happy. And what you're doing isn't making you happy, what's the point of going on? So, in that case, just drop it and do something else. But generally, if you have passion for what you're doing, you'll have persistence because it's what you want to do with your life. Um, you got to prove the potential, the market potential of the product, and you got to prove that you can execute before investing in you more rounds of funding, additional cash. Um, you know, I think how do you structure a platform for rapid growth? Choose the right idea, the right product, the right market. Choose the right people. Get enough financing on board, as much as you can, and figure out the leverage points of the organization. And I say leverage points is this is part of the organization you know, that you see scale up without. Us in this market, we have a very good marketing engine, we have a good email person, a good search person, good email marketing. Uh, we know that when the time is right and our service can handle the load, we'll just drive the traffic again. 
right now when you try to push it to a certain level, it cracks because you know, our, our servers haven't can't handle the volume of traffic. So we know that the leverage point is marketing and not computing capacity. So we fix that problem, then we know that we can scale the market. When the market hits a plateau, you need to know well, you when know, market really bring in so many, we need to bring in our business urban team can take it to the next level. So let's say we go to 20,000 users a day, we need six or seven right now, but let's say we 20,000 users a day, and that's the most we get on marketing, we then switch to business dev mode, and the business dev guys will sign a you know, 10 million PC deal with Mason, for example. So you've got to know what points you know, in your growth is going to just leverage you into for the growth. You can't get to a point where you go, okay, now we've got now what? So have a good long-term view on that. So this is just about you know, how traditional timelines work for uh, entrepreneurs and I would say just the normal career. Now South Africa is an interesting situation because we haven't really had an entrepreneurial cycle of call it 66 years or even 53 years since the part that ended. We've had what's it, 15 years or 18 years. So it's not even a full you know, double generation. So we've got a problem in this country where uh, entrepreneurs, so you know, when you the first 18 years of life, it's pretty much the same. You depend on your parents. Uh, the traditional timeline is you're a student, you don't have money, and then you start a job so you can pay for student loans or whatever you do, and then you decide to have a family and you become family focused um, and creating some wealth for yourself and you get the golden age and retirement. And it's a pretty standard corporate path that you take. For entrepreneurs, it's not quite the same. Um, you know, the entrepreneurs are the ones that leave school, they can't afford to go to varsity, so they go and they can get a job. Or they just become entrepreneurs and they start businesses and they actually just have no money. Okay. But somewhere in this time frame, in the first 14 years or 15 years of their life post school, hopefully they make some money and then they reinvest it back in this, in this youth market. It's sort of youth to me. But we need to get this cycle right because we don't right now. We don't have enough. I know lots of people, 19 to 33 year olds, who just don't have money but they have great ideas and they can't get money from people in this era here because these guys don't want to take any risks. The angel investors here, they don't want to put the money in because, well, why should they? They've got 10, 15 years left to retirement, and if they put the money in the music, they want to work extra hard. So it's, it's, perfectly, you know, it's, it's, it's perfectly right. The people who should be taking the risks are the guys who have said, okay, you know what, um, I've done this before, I know how to start businesses, I can help me to these entrepreneurs, I can help get them off the ground, I'm willing to risk my money because I've still got a whole bunch of time left to run more businesses and make more money. And so basically, we need to start this is the, the so for, for the from the entrepreneur side, you've got about a, you know call it it's a 25 year lifespan of entrepreneurs where entrepreneurs have to recycle cash into the local economy and create more businesses. So the paradox is, okay, over time you have no money, and then you know by the time you're 65, hopefully you've got some little less stack of cash. At the beginning, you have all the ideas, you've got no money to put them in action. And as you get older, you run out of ideas. I mean, I think I'm somewhere here. Because like, I, don't have any, I don't have as many ideas as I used to have 15 years ago. And I look at investing in companies and you know, guys who have got lots of ideas. Generally, it's the young 20-year-olds, the 20-year-old guys. They have all the ideas and they just broke. The good thing is they're cheap because they don't take big salaries. <laughs> they can start the business on a, on a small amount of money. It's just, so it's an interesting paradox. As you get older, you run out of ideas, but you make lots of money. So we've got to get people with the mindset that you should be investing in young guys who are desperate for the cash to start businesses, and they just don't have the money to kick start. And you know, so you take this and you go back this slide, you understand what I'm talking about here. You know, so the entrepreneurs, at this sort of juncture here, the middle point, I don't want to be an entrepreneur anymore. I mean, in the next, call it the next couple of years after the other, I'm hopefully going to be this and going to help the younger guys you know, kickstart businesses, create jobs, etc. I want to come back and I want to be part of this this sort of phase of my life where I don't have to run the company, just need to invest in the world. But we need more of this culture brewing. And that's what I'm really trying to advocate. And you know, in September we're having a, uh, like a brunch, uh, called Silicon Cape Brunch, and we're trying to, we're trying to brand it as area Silicon Cape. And, and get people an idea that this can be like a Silicon Valley where there's tons of capital available for young guys. I mean, you don't want to be investing in people who are at, at, at the 34 to 53 level in the corporates who have got kids and need secure jobs because startups are hard, startups are high risk. There's a good chance you're going to go broke and who's going to feed your family? And that's the reality. It's, it's not, you know, that's why people don't leave their safe jobs to start businesses. It's just, not a, it's just not a smart idea. It isn't. If you're an entrepreneur without a family and you're in that phase of your life and you really want to make a startup to go over a startup, that's the type of guys who are investing, guys who really want to make a 
up there. It's, 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 so it's an interesting paradox. I'm going to have kids soon. When that happens, you know, there'll be a certain portion of my portfolio that's safe, and then there's a certain portion that I want to reinvest. But, so it's, these paradoxes sort of play in my mind because I try to think what can stimulate the local economy. And I really think the important thing is getting into the young guys and giving the young guys the cash to run with it because they don't have shackles on their feet. They don't have, uh, they don't have a, nothing holding them back to be successful except the ideas and the energy. And I want to see more of that happening. And that's really, and the rest is just Q&A, so. Mm -hmm.